Now we know how to linearize, we know how to solve linear systems, but the rest of the picture, that takes a little bit of thought. Let's look at a few methods for filling in the blanks, shall we say. A specific example would be great. Let's do one in continuous time. Let's say we have the system dx dt equals x minus y and dy dt equals 1 minus x times y. Now referring to what we just learned, the right hand side, that function capital F is given by the right hand side of the system. The first output is x minus y, second output is 1 minus x times y. If we compute the derivative of that, it is represented as the two by two matrix with columns, the partials in x, that is one and negative y, then the partials in y, negative one and negative x. We have to evaluate this derivative at the equilibria. So set the right hand sides equal to zero and solve both of these equations in order to get the equilibria. The first equation tells us that equilibria occur where x equals y, and the second equation tells us where x times y equals 1. Substituting in, I get x squared equals 1, x is either plus or minus 1, and that's the same value as y. At the point 1 comma 1, if I evaluate the derivative there, I get the matrix 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. The determinant of that is negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. Ah, negative determinant, that's a saddle. The second equilibrium at negative 1, negative 1. When we evaluate the derivative there, we get the matrix 1, 1, negative 1, 1. That has positive trace, that has positive determinant, and they work out so that these eigenvalues are complex. That means you've got a spiral source. That's it. That's our equilibrium. We've classified things. But what now? How do we get a better understanding of this full nonlinear system? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little more information about these equilibria. First of all, at that saddle, at 1 comma 1, it would be helpful to know what the stable and unstable eigenvectors are so that we can see a little bit better the directions of things. So if we do a little bit of work writing out the characteristic polynomial, we find that the eigenvalues are lambda 1 is square root of 2, lambda 2 is negative square root of 2. With additional work, we can get explicit choices for eigenvectors. And we find that that unstable eigenvector is pointed in the direction of negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 1. In contrast, the stable eigenvector is pointed along the direction given by negative 1 plus square root of 2, 1. Now, again, this is in local coordinates about that equilibrium. This is not in the full x, y space. This is local about 1, 1. Those eigenvectors give us a better local picture. Now, that works well for the saddle, but what about the spiral that we found? In particular, which way does it rotate? Clockwise, counterclockwise, how do we figure that out? Here's a simple way to proceed. Once we know what the derivative at that point is, we're gonna set up some local coordinates about the equilibrium. Let's call them u and v. Based on the derivative, I know that the linearized dynamics are given by du dt equals u minus v, dv dt equals u plus v. Now, there are many ways that we could visualize this dynamics. We could try plotting the vector field, all kinds of things. Maybe the simplest thing to do is just pick a point. Pick a point in these local coordinates that is not at the equilibrium and see which way it points. Let's say I pick a point along the u-axis. So u is positive, v is zero. Substituting that into the linearized dynamics, I get that dv dt is positive. That means that along that u-axis, the dynamics is pointed up. I know I'm spiraling out. That means I'm rotating in a counterclockwise fashion. Does this work in general? Yeah, it does. And it's much easier than trying to, I don't know, transform to polar coordinates or something like that. Nope, just pick a point. That's a great way to determine the direction of a spiral. 
We've made good progress, but now we need to get the big picture. We need to put it all together. We know that we have this spiral source, we have the saddle, we know something about the directions, we know the local picture really well. How do we go from local to global? Well, one tool at your disposal is, as always, Occam's Razor. Keep it simple. What is the simplest way of filling in this local picture in order to get a global structure? Now, as with any application of Occam's Razor, there is no guarantee of simplicity in life, especially in dynamical systems. A different method that is a bit more determinative is the method of isoclines. This is really restricted to two-dimensional continuous time dynamics, but, but it's not so bad. Isocline, that means same slope. What you do is you write out your dynamics, your vector field, and you look for a curve in the plane where the vectors all have the same slope. So for example, you could say, where is dx dt equal to zero? This is the locations in the plane where the vectors are pointed vertically. And that happens along the line where x equals y. Or you could say, what about where dy dt vanishes? Those are places in the plane where the vectors are pointed horizontally. That happens along the hyperbole given by x times y equals 1. Now, of course, these two curves intersect in the equilibria where dx dt and dy dt equals 0. This is not the easiest thing to plot or to see. In general, it takes a little bit of working with to get this method to work right, but sometimes it's helpful. Of course, the best thing is to simulate the system if you can, to draw the vector field, simulate the flow, in which case you can see how things fit together. You can see that the local linear pictures around the equilibria fit together to give you a simple global picture. It's not always so nice, but sometimes it is.